So this first version of Photoshop for iPad is perfect. <laughs> So Photoshop for the iPad was debuted at the 2018 September Apple event with the release of the third generation iPad Pro. And after a full year of waiting, we finally see it released with the Adobe Max conference this past week. Now, it's only been about a week, but Photoshop has already been under heavy criticism on YouTube and on the internet everywhere because of its main critique that it just heavily lacks in features that people were looking for. As a matter of fact, Adobe is actually aware of this and they recognize that they could have been clearer about how they pushed the advertising in the beginning, stating that it wasn't a full Photoshop, but just a real version. This is not a watered down version of Photoshop. This is real Photoshop. Let me show you the real Photoshop. Since I am a digital artist, I'm going to focus more on Photoshop from a digital art perspective and less from a photography one. I was actually really excited when I heard Photoshop was actually going to have a full version coming to the iPad Pro last year, but I quickly started to hear rumors that it wasn't really going to be that great for artists and creatives like me, and it was going to be more for people who are into photography and photo manipulation. I was a little bit disappointed, but I decided, hey, it would still be really useful to be able to use Photoshop on my iPad to polish up my final paintings and get them nice and sharp for Instagram. Later on, I realized I could probably just use it as well for my YouTube thumbnails, save a lot of time, do it on the fly whenever I want, and then also use it to prepare artwork for prints. Unfortunately, I can't do either. I'm going to show you exactly why I think this app is still pretty much in beta 1.0 and why it's really not going to be that useful to you unless you're working with some very specific types of projects. So to get started, let's talk about why it's virtually impossible to use if you're doing digital art like me. So first off, you can't rotate the canvas. This is the biggest deal breaker for me and you can clearly see how much I'm struggling in the video where I'm drawing and especially when I get into Elsa's hair. It would have been even worse if I didn't prepare an under sketch and procreate first. Like Adobe Fresco, you can not import any new brushes into the program and the few settings that you can actually change for each brush tend to switch back and reset themselves after you come back to using that brush if you switch to using a new one. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> And that little quick tool circle thing is still super painful to use and it only works for me half the time, like I said with Adobe Fresco. It's so difficult to actually like hold that little circle, wait for it to pop up and then delicately try to erase something with my Apple Pencil and then I just end up letting go or something just glitches out and it starts coloring instead of erasing. So I don't know, at least in Photoshop, they actually let you use uh, a brush with the eraser tool this time. So that's good and I hope that makes its way to Adobe Fresco. You might be thinking, Josh, come on, stop complaining. Just use the Apple Pencil and use the double tap feature. You paid for it, so you might as well use it, right? Yes, that would be a good compromise, but in Adobe Photoshop for the iPad, they actually set it to zoom out. And I don't know about you, but I never need that feature on hand very quickly. And you can't even change it. Uh, you either have to accept that when you double tap or mistakenly double tap, it's going to just zoom out or disable it. So there you have it. The second issue for me is with the lag in the brushes. Adobe says in their website that if you use smoothing, that it may have some lag and it may kind of space out in between your actual pencil tip. But I found even with zero smoothing turned on, it still lags and it feels like it's appearing sometimes instead of following smoothly with the stroke. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you in 120 frames per second, you can see how just using a medium kind of size, at least in my opinion, you can see it just starts to jitter across the screen compared to Procreate and that's just not cool. It feels like I'm trying to use full Photoshop on the Surface or maybe the what I've seen people do on the new Surface Pro X, but this is the iPad. Everything's supposed to be smooth, so I really am not too happy with the experience with these brushes, especially my favorite brush on there, which is the only pencil brush, the animator pencil, which is what I'm using in the video. And yeah, it's just, it's pretty bad to use. I could probably just shrink the canvas down. I will admit that canvas is pretty big at 8,000 by 6,000 pixels. But I mean, come on, this is, this is what it is. This is Photoshop. And if you want to shrink the canvas down, then you're compromising on quality. And I don't think anyone wants to do that. And a small issue is that there isn't any CMYK workflow in Photoshop for the iPad. And if you don't know what that is, that basically means that if you work in that way, your colors will look accurate once you print them. 
And if you work in RGB, they'll look accurate online, but they won't really look accurate once you start printing them for prints and things like that. Like I said, it's not too big of an issue, but Procreate's gonna have it soon, and I'm gonna talk more about why this is more significant later on. As for photo editing, I won't get into too much detail, but it's really just for basic uh, retouching using the clone and heal tools. That's pretty much it, uh, unless you're into photo manipulation workflows using the selection and masking tools. So if I wanted to use this for my thumbnails, for example, I can add text, but I can't add any strokes or any drop shadow to make my thumbnails pop more. And we all know that's super important if you wanna get people to watch your videos. I personally also love using the burn and dodge tools when it comes to editing my photographs to highlight certain areas and kind of have some things fade into the background, but those simple tools aren't available yet in this version. And the most important thing I do in Photoshop when it comes to my thumbnails or any type of media that I post online is using Camera Raw and the automatic editing tools to kind of, you know, make my pictures pop and make them much better than what just comes straight out of the camera. But those tools are just not here. The polygonal lasso and magic wand tools are also huge things that I use in my workflow because sometimes I like to select my hand and change the position a little bit. Um, and I need to be very precise so that it looks authentic in my thumbnails, but those features aren't here, although it seems like those are definitely going to be coming very soon. So it's pretty clear that Photoshop for the iPad is targeted towards basic photo retouching and photo manipulation projects. But I feel like there's something more to this that's bigger than just Adobe releasing a app way too early. The thing is, I feel like Adobe Photoshop hasn't really vocalized that Photoshop is going to be great and perfect for digital artists and concept artists and illustrators, even though it's really reigned king as the main pipeline tool for all of these industries. Since Adobe Fresco is coming to more and more platforms, I think this is how Adobe is beginning to address the more um, kind of manual creative industry like digital artists and illustrators. I feel like Adobe has split their time and resources between Photoshop and Adobe Fresco, and so that explains why they're extremely underwhelming at launch. So my final verdict is that if you were waiting to actually buy an iPad because you were excited about Photoshop coming to the iPad, please don't spend that much money right now because it is not going to be worth it for you. Unless you happen to be super into photo manipulation, then I guess you can go ahead and you're probably going to enjoy Photoshop for the iPad. If you're into photo retouching and some photo manipulation as well, then I still caution you because you're going to notice the limitations very, very quickly if you're advanced. And if you're a digital artist, illustrator, or concept artist, it's really just not worth the purchase right now unless you already have a Creative Cloud subscription. The only thing that I can see this app being useful for me is if I want to use the Photoshop tools that I know so well to clean up sketches that I've done traditionally so that I can color them and ink them in different programs. Looking back on Adobe Fresco, it's funny how much more useful that is to me compared to Photoshop for the iPad, especially since it's cheaper than Photoshop for the iPad. And yes, Photoshop for the iPad is $13 and just about 50 cents per month with a one month free trial. I think in the meantime, it would be better for you to look at more powerful applications like Art Studio Pro or Affinity Photo for your photo editing needs until Adobe hopefully pushes out the several, several updates that this app needs in the next coming months. In my opinion, Adobe really should have released Photoshop with at least six months of a free trial like they did with Adobe Fresco so that people can warm up to this idea of frequent updates and kind of monitor how it's progressing. But I guess that's what people like me are for because I'll definitely keep you updated on that. So I've been Ergo Josh and thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, please consider liking and subscribing because I do new videos every week. And if you're a regular, thank you so much for your continued support. If you are interested in my artwork, you should check out my Patreon page. Details and links to all of that and all of the tools that I use are going to be in the description box below. And in the meantime, keep drawing and stay positive. Peace.